Hello everyone, so we're going to wrap up this module with how to mock up your image on a newspaper. You'll notice from the first assignment we did that on a uh, just a blank sheet. Um, I want to go in depth into that because it's necessary to see your designs in the wild sometimes to see them in, you know, the real world. So we're going to mock it up on a newspaper. You don't have to mock it up on a newspaper if you find a magazine article um, and I've supplied an image of a magazine that you can pull that has the same ratio as our file from the previous tutorial, go right ahead. So I've taken a picture of the New York Times. I'm going to add my image in and start to make it look realistic. So here's the image. Looks a little faded. I also want to pull it from the background because if you notice, it's hard to tell against this black um, background, but it's not really a true, true white. I'll show you a good way whenever I'm editing photos is I sometimes change my interface just so I could see um, the difference between the white on the page and what I think is white. So I'll go to Preferences, Photoshop Preferences, interface and you'll see up here you can actually change the color so I even bring it to a white and now you can really see how warm this is and if I'm doing a portfolio I don't want it to be too warm I want it to uh, to not distract from the image here so what I'm going to go in and do now is adjust the image so I'm going to image adjustments levels and what's nice about levels is you right over here you could sample colors and have it change. You could do it here if I wanted to, but I like to sometimes do a little shortcut and man, some, a lot of times it'll work really well. I'm going to go in and just slightly darken the newspaper just to get some of that color back. That's a little too dark. Yeah. So that's a good start. You sometimes even have to sample areas over here that got a little too much uh, shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and try it again. You'll, you'll see even here it shifts and now it's starting to look pretty solid white. It is getting a little bit too bright here. So again, I'm going to go in and adjust. Okay. So now that I have that, I might even go ahead and start to adjust my background. I'm going to sample this white just to make sure it is white. Switch the swatch to the background and then I can go ahead and just start to center my newspaper like so like that we must keep the size to 6 by 9 so let's go in and check our image size I think it's changed yep width so let's make sure first our height is right six by nine and then what I'm gonna do is increase the width to be until I hit nine I'm holding option and click and that's allowing it to go from the center so now I'll go to image size and I should be at six by nine so if you need me to do that again go ahead click crop in the crop tool and then I'm holding option and that's allowing me to pull from the center if I don't have option open it'll allow me to pull this way which isn't a big deal but I want it to be centered together and so I'm just gonna pull it right to nine and hit you can also adjust it up here so now I have my right proportions so that when you upload your JPEG files it'll be the same size as your trial image as your as your first image excuse me so when I'm grading it's consistent and also when you present to a client you don't want things jumping around you want it to stay consistent so it's not distracting if things jump around your your client or a friend or whoever you're designing or creating something for might get distracted by those little errors. Those are considered errors. So now I have my image here. 
what I need to do is start to take away this previous image. And I found an image uh, that was the right proportion. So um, you're going to need to find the image that's the right size within 6 by 9 constraints. So you are more than welcome to use this one if you need to. So what I'm going to go ahead and go in and start selecting with my polygon lasso tool this image. It's not perfect. You can see it starts to warp. That's okay. That's going to make it look realistic. So I'm going to take my polygon lasso tool and just start to slowly gather the information, making sure it's quite accurate. You'll see the curve of the paper is starting to modify the rectangle here. So even here, just like that. So I'm going to go all the way around. I feel like I'm starting to, yeah, I want to make sure I'm selecting the outside part so it all disappears. Just like so, till I get all the way around. Take your time here, try to get as a nice clean cut. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to fill this layer just so I have it as reference. I'm going to unclear that though, go back to this layer. If it is locked, you can just drag it to the new. And then we'll just clear that one. So we made a new layer. And then I duplicated this layer. So now I have this one and this one. So you can see, you're going to modify it slightly if you start to see some of the image coming through. I'm going to bring my image in. I'm calling it the trial, I don't know. And start. to turn my image in a way to replicate this. So I'm going to just use the transform tool. I'm in edit free transform and I'm rotating my image like so for now. So it's in it's getting there. I'm going to make it slightly translucent just so I can see what's going on. I'm going to go back to Edit Transform, and I can start to skew it now. So I need to skew it so it can start to sit in the same portal. And then I'm going to distort it. So now I can start to mess with the perspective. And I'm just trying to place this in like so before I don't want to start warping it yet because I want it to stay true to the shape for now and then I'll make I'll use the warp tool to make modifications because using the warp tool is sometimes a bit tricky. So again, I want to make sure, okay, now some might say, all right, just go ahead and make a mask, but if I make a mask, I lose all this information, I lose the integrity of my image. So now I'm going to go ahead and edit, transform, warp, and I'm going to slowly, this one's going to take a little bit of play to get it right where I want it. And I'm just going to move this around until I can even move this image too if I feel like it's not warp, it's not sitting right until 
we have our image. Then I'll go ahead and I have my new image. Now I'm not done yet, especially because I can see parts of my image here. I want to make slight adjustments to cover that. So I'm going to edit, transform, warp again. Just slightly cover that. So we don't even want the shadow. I want to look like it's in the paper. And we're going to do a few things to edit it to make it look like it's in the paper. So there we go. Now if we were to remove this, we could check it against that. And so the reason I made this a color is I want to start to make this image look like it was printed on this paper. So paper has a lot to do with changing the way something looks. So this is a very dull gray. So I want to be able to overlay this on this gray to make it look like it's inside the paper. You see what I just did there, right? What I did was I made it so by hitting multiply instead of normal. So normal keeps it consistent, keeps it on a white screen. But by playing with the layer settings, you could start to make it look like it's within the paper that's printed on top of this paper. So with that though, you get a lot of transparency, so you do need to make some adjustments. You could also, uh, if you find that it's a little bit of a pain, you could delete this layer, duplicate this one, so right click, duplicate layer, and that way it's the exact same layer, just do a color overlay, and you have the same feeling. So if they didn't line up, that's also what you could do. I just duplicated the image layer so that it's sat within this and you don't have to correct it. So to reiterate what I've done is I first drew a shape to match up, to match up my image with that shape. I then discovered that um, by making slight adjustments to my image, it didn't it no longer related to this shape here. So I deleted it, and then I just duplicated the photo and did a color overlay over top the photo so that it sat in the same spot. And there we go. So that looks great. It, all, everything lines up. That's what you want to look for is everything's lining up with the text. And I can even start to mess with some of the settings here. I could lower the opacity slightly, too, to make it even look more or less. So you can even play around with some of the color settings in here, but make sure it does match your previous your uh, example image. So you don't want to do too much to it. Like even this isn't bad. It's it's a bit bright. So I would definitely stick with multiply and that gives you a good look of it on the paper. You can go and you can even blur things, so if they look a little crisp, you can actually go to Filter, Blur Gallery. You can even modify it enough so it looks like, see in the photo it's a little bit blurry? So I'm going to go in... Just do a slight blur just to make it fit more with with the newspaper make it match the rest of the content yeah that works hit OK and there you go it looks like it's in the same the same space what I want to do now is adjust my text down here to reflect my article so if you used an article um, you can directly take that text at, um, and use it to name this. Or if you didn't, if you used a, a topic, then go ahead and try to find, come up, come up with a phrase of some sort to fit 
in this area. Now, you don't have to to do this newspaper if you find one where um, the article name is in a different spot, um, but you will need to utilize and fix, you'll need to fix the text to reflect your article. So I've selected this, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and see what um, content-aware tools will give me. So let's see what, sometimes I get lucky, nope, oh, because I'm on the wrong layer, edit, fill, content aware, yeah, it actually does a lot, it, it does a great job of erasing a lot, Some, so I can go in the rest, and I can go in, into the spot heal tool, and just start to clear most of this away. I'm going to even erase this person's name cuz I want you to put that's where I want you to put your name. So it takes a little bit of um patience to get it right, but yeah. You can even be selective and say, "Okay, I only want to impact this little area." And I'll also help you keep a nice solid line. And then go to the healing tool. Now if you're having trouble, always go to clone stamp if you have a nice area to sample. And you could just sample that too. So that goes away. And then now I just need to remove the title. I'm not too worrying. We're not going to worry about the body copy. Now you might find a newspaper that has an appropriate article and you can you can keep it. Like this is a very ambitious, ambiguous title that I could keep, but I want to show you how to change that. So I've selected this. I'm gonna keep it kinda yeah, broad in terms of my selection. That way maybe it samples some of the gray. Go edit fill. Maybe I'll get lucky again, content aware. Nope, see, this is a good example of not getting so lucky. So what I can do is sample this area, pay, copy and paste it, bring it down, even modify it slightly, fuse it, so I'm gonna merge it with the, the bottom layer and then see maybe it'll maybe it'll give me a better shot. I'm gonna edit fill. And there's other ways to do this. Oh, made it worse. <laughs> um, so what I will then do is go in and use my clone stamp tool, sample an area. And just sl slowly start to patch this in a way. Once I have text in front of it too, no, you're not going to be able to tell that I did this. So, all option click allows you to sample. And then you just click there. Or you can go into our spot healing patch tools. You can play around. with that. You can increase your area by shortcuts with the brackets and then you can start to yeah, if you go too big you'll get you'll get text and other things. I tend to try and see if I could just sample this area and see if I can even change it then. So fill, content aware, oh no, it's not doing it there.
So I'll, I'll want to keep going and trying to get rid of this subheader too. Yeah, I got lucky with the subheader. Then I want to just go ahead and spot heal the, the edges. I wonder why I'm getting a white area. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Merge this. And then go and start to fix any any weird effect scene. I find that if you go in in like kind of do some oddball <laughs> um, ways of of using the tool, like not just straight lines, it also makes it look a little more natural. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and mess with that. I will I'll continue to mess with it, but I want to go to the next thing which is adding your your title. So my article was is Google making us stupid. So I've I've hit it. I'm going to go with Times New Roman because that is the article. Uh, that's uh the typeface that was being used before and it's times new right um, I'm gonna sample the text color not just a black because as you can see I don't want it to get to be too dark so I'm gonna sample color and then I'm gonna go to edit transform I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to make some adjustments. And I want to line that. That's why I kept this line here. So I could line it up. Yeah. And I'll just make it a little bit larger. And I think I want to bold the typeface. It's a bit hard to read. There we go. I'm going to go with Times New. And italicize. And I'm going to look up the article and see what other things. what the internet is doing to our brains I might want to put underneath it so I'm going to duplicate this layer duplicate that way it stays on the same I don't have to do any adjustments I just have to paste and I don't want it to be the same size and I might even change the body weight so I'm going to decrease Maybe even smaller. I could even just decrease this way. I just want to make sure there's enough room between both. I'm going to duplicate this again, so right click, duplicate layer, and I want to cite the author, so, oh, it's in there, that's good, I, I didn't realize it is by, so what you can do is go ahead and put your name, and smaller, I can even change the typeface since it's going to be smaller, it might not be as legible. So I might go to Arial and since it's just for mock-up, I'll know who, you, who is it. So just for the mock-up, you can put your name like so. Yeah, I think that looks great. Um, what I can go in and start to rasterize everything and blur them slightly. So I'm going to make sure they're center. Merge them, 
or rasterize them, rasterize type. I'm just going to merge them together, merge layers, so they're all together. So you, you can't even tell that I, I mean, I might, I might go in and fix some of these areas. But let's go ahead and do that blurring to this one as well, just to make it look fade into the paper a little bit. Yeah, just to make it look like I didn't type it in there. And there we go. So the last thing you want to do is save. You're going to save it as a JPEG. So first name, last name. And if you don't know what to name it as, it's in the web courses right here. So you need two, the design view and the image mocked up, just like so. So I, when I did this, I had just made it like this. And I did a better job <laughs> cleaning that up, as you can see. But you'll see here, you'll need first name, last name, dash, mock-up. So. And you'll upload both of those. You'll upload your first image, just like on this page. You see the image, and then you see it mocked up. You see it's changed in color. It's slightly faded to match the newspaper and you'll submit both items. That concludes this tutorial. Um, you'll see on this page that I will include other mockups. So this one is for a magazine. So you're more than welcome to use this if you want to mock it up on the magazine. Just know that I will only be doing the tutorial for the newspaper. It's one and the same. So please let me know if you have any questions via email and uh, looking forward to seeing what you do. Thanks.